Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to play a game I found out on itch.io. It's no longer on on yet, right now. Because the creator created it to rewrite the game called You and Him. So I really wanted to play this. There's going to be a rewrite, so when the rewrite happens, I will replay it. But let's do it. You. Middle of nowhere, 3.32 p.m. In our news, the hit boy band Cake will be playing live tomorrow tonight. Tomorrow night at the San uh, Santa Rita Valley Stadium at Park Bend, Arizona. <laughs> According to the sources, concert tickets sold out within seconds of their into. Uh, Inter um, intentional online sales, sales, online release date, despite the fact that a massive influx of these users caused the website itself to crash. Luckily, they managed to get this, uh, get the site up and running again, but many people were upset since they were forced to log back in, and many missed out on buying tickets because of this. Thousands took to twi uh, Twitter to vent their frustrations while others made light of the situation by making and sharing memes. Many of these posts were went viral and caused Santa, Santa Rita Valley Stadium trending for three days straight on Twitter itself. The DJ lets out a huff of breath. I won't be, won't be listening to this. I've been, I've been listening to classic rock, so... <laughs> I can't believe what I'm seeing in these reports. Can you, Kenny? The um, car radio crackles and a new voice joins in on the conversation, but his tongue coming across as both juvenile and borderline cartoonish. Not in the slightest, and I'm just as stunned as you are. It's fascinating to see these young men who starred from a, a, a modest background raised to take the world by storm. I don't think I've seen a boy band craze this bad since the 90s and early 2010s. Unless you call it K-pop. Uh, K-pop still going, um, craze is still going on, right? In 2000s. You can't forget the 2000s. But I don't think those were compared uh, those are, I don't think those even compared to what for seeing today. Don't you agree, Bob? No, oh, um, BTS? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> Bob, the first radio DJ who spoke. What's out, giant? Golf. Whoa, boy. That's an understatement. Even the, my husband adores the, the their latest hit single, The Way You Make Me Sway, which is saying something. I thought your husband ate modern day music. My point is actually, if they were, if they can make my husband fall in love their sound, then you know they got something special that that old man like him can't even ignore. When they start playing Cake's latest single, you turn down the dial on the radio, choosing instead to focus on a long stretch of road before you. The blistering heat already makes it hard to concentrate, and you don't need to add the added distraction. No, no, if it's um, carry on my words or son, I'm pulling out full blast. <laughs> a, a supernatural fan at heart. <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm well across the clock. Especially because, considering you've driven almost 323 miles, thanks to your aunts saying, please gather up all your uncle's valuables and drop them off at his new apartment in the next six towns over, and you are on the return drive home, sans guns. You tried turning her down, but your mom called and forced you to agree. Something about being a good relative and mentions of past actions where your aunt almost didn't treat you like dirt. Yada yada yada. 
Um, my mom went through that. My mom sees the, them treat me like dirt and says, screw it, you're not helping them. <laughs> yeah, I'm completely different family. <laughs> Impulse mom would have to be in the car with me because I will freaking I am Zoro when it comes to Lord Zoro from One Piece when it comes to directions. I'm like I probably end up in Canada. <laughs> We're in Arizona and I end up in Canada. At this point, you just want to hang up and go back to your hermit crap lifestyle. So you agree. And took an obscure mouth guns from your aunt to give to your uncle. A scene of mouth guns. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm, I'm armed to the teeth. You want to go? Uh, who wants to go uh, hunting for vampires and demons and whatnot? I'm, I'm gonna be Sam and Dean. <laughs> Due to the terms and conditions of their divorce, the judge ruled that since your aunt got ownership of the house, your aunt needed to fork over her collection of guns and hand them over to your uncle. Wait, it's her collection of guns? Wait, she has to hand it to the uncle. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but I don't think that's how that works. It's her collection, if, especially if you bought it yourself. <laughs> like, I get divorced and they take all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Gain the, the um, aforementioned guns out of their house was a nightmare. Doma kept screaming every time you loaded the guns into your car. He had to restrain her from when she kept trying to lodge for you. Truck saying for, for, for your truck saying she, she he wouldn't know if one or two were missing. <laughs> What's the rush? Does it go shoot? <laughs> yeah, my parent, my mom wouldn't let me. <laughs> Especially knowing my family. When you refused to budge on the matter, she became incontrovertible and ran inside the house, shutting herself in the bathroom for a solid 20 minutes before you needed to leave. With that, we're the black sheep of the family. When you return, her demeanor returned to normal. Well, at least for her. Relatives are weird, man. Speaking of uh, weird, how long was this stretch of road again. You could could have swore it was a heck of a, a, a lot shorter the first go around. Uh, not to mention you need to pee. I'm just gone the side of the road. <laughs> you regret not stopping by the gas station, fifty miles back, actively choosing to ignore the huge warning sign that said next gas station in hundred miles. Uh, that's just me in a nutshell. <clears throat> Terrible decision considering the current state of your bladder. <clears throat> you mull over your lack of options when something in the distance catches your attention. As your car eats up the distance between you, you make the sharp, uh, sh the shape of a large lumbering figure walking t along the side of the road, with a thumb jolting out, raising above their head. Uh, no head tracker, sorry. <laughs> I've been told not to take hitchhikers. Huh. What's a hitchhiker doing on the way out here? <clears throat> Your bladder quakes. Never mind. You don't have time though for this. Not to mention the fact that your mother always warned you about shady hitchhikers. <clears throat> My mom did too. Never take a hitchhiker. Lying this man into your car reeks of future trouble. Best to avoid the situation like this altogether. When you pull right up behind him, you notice a distant uh, limp in his walk and blood booming out from his pant leg. Seeing his injury cause guilt to stall in. <clears throat> yeah, my mom told me not to. He clearly hurt and needs help, but there's no one else around but you. You wrestle with your options when he suddenly collapses onto a heap of the, uh, on the side of the road. Crap. There goes your self-preservation. You park just way ahead of him and watch out of the driver's seat, praying to God that you won't believe in that. Uh, you don't believe 
in that he's okay. When you reach him, you fall to your knees and gently nudge his shoulder, only to get her no response. Come on, please be okay. Oh, this is already on there. You lean over, uh, lean down, and pressure her head against his chest. You feel it rise and fall in the ground of a faint heartbeat. Good, uh, good, he's still breathing. You sit back and try to gently shake his shoulder again. Sir, sir, can you hear me? Eh. Uh, he's also conscious. Good, and another good sign. Don't worry, sir. I'm going to call for help, okay? You pull out your cell phone, ready to dial emergency hotline. Helpline. When the hand slat latches onto your wrist in a vice like grip, and the man beneath you adjusts himself into a sitting position. You're taken back by the man's fierce graze, uh, gra graze glaring at you for the veil of raven colored hair. Don't call anyone, I'm fine. Yes, but... Nail sticking to your forearm. Not enough to draw blood, but enough to break, uh, warn you he means business. I said I'm fine. <laughs> Listen to the sexy man. You are your phone. And ex uh, uh, exiting out of the phone app without a second gla uh, gla glance at the screen. Alright, but at least let me take you uh, take a look at your leg. He's visibly lax as that you got compliant nature and nods, leaning back so you could roll up his pant leg and examine the damage laying beneath. Bro coats alone on his leg. You can't even see the stint of the energy when he there's no so much you need to clean off. Wait right here. You head for your car and locate a box car knife hidden beneath the driver's seat. Cutting off the bottom half of your shirt, you grab one grab the once cold but not warm water bottle. Now warm water bottle you brought with you for your mi uh, mini road trip and use it to soak the stray piece of fabric. You toss your box cutter back onto the driver's seat before returning to the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker looks up, up upon hearing your approaching footsteps. You watch his eyes widen into the equivalent of large saucers, his lips slightly parted in surprise as his glaze zeroes in on the new pat uh, patch of exposed skin. He studies the, sharp, uh, the shape of your body. Tracing over each and every part of you with his new eyes, you grow frustrated, frustrated at the frustrated at the tension, but you also don't hate it. It's nice in a way. You're only a little disappointed. The he versus gaze, wondering if you misinterpreted the situation until he bites at his bottom lip, as if he's done something naughty. Your heart frustrates at the implications. His ration is kind of cute. You are yourself to his level, eye uh, level, and try to ignore the plush spreading across your own cheeks. He's actually, he's really attractive. In fact, you couldn't help but notice when he rushed into the side and saw the intense expression, like a narrow sticking through your, uh, you helpless, like, little, helpless little heart. But that's not the only thing that garnered your attention. The hitchhiker is Adam, the leader, the lead singer of Cake. What's he doing all the way out here in the middle of nowhere? So I couldn't help but notice this, but you're Adam, right? The hitchhiker hesitates before nodding. Okay, so I don't mean to sound rude, but what are you doing all the way out here asking strangers for rides? Adam rubs, uh, rubs his back of his head, almost sleep in his answer. I accidentally drove my car into a ditch a few miles back, and I forgot my phone at the studio, so I couldn't really reach out and call anyone. Figured out the off chance that someone drove by, I could bump a ride. He smiles and... Guess I got lucky you showed up when you did. You're a lifesaver. You almost... You're almost blinded by that smile. <clears throat> Was he, um... 
Chip Skywalker? A Scott, Chip Sky. Uh, I, no wonder his fan, fan girls go crazy. Urging your pounding heart to calm down, you try to concentrate on the conversation at hand and start on cleaning his leg. You need to focus. Oh, was the crash how you got hurt? Adam shakes his head. Cut my thigh open, open while hitchhiking with my friends a couple of weeks ago. One of the tree branches was a little too sharp. It gave this as a, me this as a souvenir. The doctor stitched me up, but I guess it tore back up since I started walking. He chuckles to himself. I didn't even notice, if you can believe it. You're surprised to hear the this considering he's not got a performance going on later tomorrow tonight uh, tomorrow night. Surely should be should get healed before going back to on stage. Well hopefully when I drive you back to town, we could get you to the doctor to get it taken care of. I'm sorry, I couldn't do anything else in the meantime. Don't worry. You've been a big help. You fresh out his phrase <clears throat> praise the smoothness of his voice and the way he said uh, says that makes you feel things you shouldn't you haven't felt in a long time in places you haven't felt in a long time you attempt to focus on the task at hand wiping away the thick congelated blood but it's hard to concentrate when all you can think about is the fact that your hands are nearly his near his thighs and Oh gosh, you're turning beet red at, from the thought of alone. Nibbling at your bottom lip, you peer up at him and find his gaze locked onto your hands with blustering, blustering intensity. You can't tell if he wants to rip your hands off his leg or guide them towards other more intimate places. <clears throat> the heat warming your, warming your body desires the later. Something wrong? I, the heat, wa the heat warming your body desires later. Something wrong? His gaze suddenly fl flicks, uh, flickers upward, and you jump, flustered that he caught you staring. No, no, just days is all. Probably something off, 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 off because of the heat. He ducked her head and reject your attention downwards, ignoring the horny little devil inside you. Since you're back on track, you didn't know this before, but the blood on his leg is a bit weird. It chips and peels away like dried paint instead of some smearing. What the? The man withdraws a small silver knife tucked into the wristband of his jean and lunges at you. You don't even have a spare moment to rat before he drives the weapon deep into your chest. Confused and ter uh, terror battling your mind, a drone pumps through your veins as you try to fight him off. You scratch your as chest, face anywhere you could uh, you could dig your nails into, but he scoffs and pins you down. With his knees, you watch in horror. As he punches it, the knife into your exposed chest again and again. Peter, help! <laughs> oh, damn it, damn it. No, no, no. You don't have time to ask why the world goes dark as the world goes dark. Let's see if we can do this again. Okay, no, we have to call. Let's 
So we have to call <clears throat> anyway and stand your ground. He says he's insane if he thinks you're just gonna let the whole thing slide. He's clearly injured and definitely needs a dressing for that wound on his leg. You yank your arm out of his grasp and press the uh, phone to your ear before standing up, turning your back to the man as you glare at the sun beating down. You. Could it be any hotter? An opera picks up. Hello. What's your mer- She's cough mid-sentence when the hitchhiker plucks the phone out of her hand and drops it to the ground. He crushes the device underneath a scoff uh, scoffled boot. Hands in his pocket, looking almost bored as he do does so. Once he's dis done destroying your phone, he worked three years in customer service to pay off. He runs his hand through his hair and reviews an all too familiar, too familiar smile. <clears throat> you recognize those features that span across the multiple blogs on the internet. Stand a phone and he's wearing white teeth, which were perfect advertisement for teen for 10 toothpaste commercials he sponsored to the scar in his eyebrow that fangirls assess over Adam as in his journey from sing, sing, uh, singing in a small time court trial, trial, uh, choir to making the, uh, becoming the lead singer of cake the lead singer of cake uh, Adam you open your mouth to comment, wondering how this man like him end up here when he rushes forward and plunges something into your shoulder. You call off guard, his momentum pushing you backwards, and your head cracks painfully onto the asphalt. The man standing over you for a moment as he wipes the blood off his knife by placing his shirt as a makeshift handkerchief. He smiles cruelly as he spawns over you, collapsed body, with a predatory grim in his eye. Thighs boxing in your hips, trapping you beneath him as he hand pins your wrist over your head. He watches, he reaches into his pocket, back pocket, and reels a phone on his, uh, reels a phone of his own. He taps something on his screen, and all of a sudden, you're brought by a light. You try blinking the star stars out of your eyes, confused by what just occurred. Shoot, I have left the flash on. Sorry about that. This son of a biscuit. You kick your legs and buck your hips in a variant effort to toss him off your body, throwing your weight across his hip, across, weight around, and hope that you catch him off bounce. But it doesn't seem to phase him in the slightest. You give up after exhausting yourself. <clears throat> Once you're settled, Adam taps his phone again and again. This time there's no blind light. He stares at the picture he just took for a moment, nods to himself, then shoves his phone into his back pocket, satisfied by whatever he sees. You got a pretty uh, photogenic face. It's, the pictures will print out great, don't you think? <clears throat> you want that yonder army to come and attack you? <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> the yonders I've already played the games on <laughs> just came out of woodwork ready to attack. <laughs> you try seeing your face, but it's missed by a landslide. Ah, uh, that was a bit, it wasn't very nice. Nice. Uh, nice went out the window when you stabbed me. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I could stab him, right? Myself? Grab the knife and stab him. <laughs> Maybe I should have stabbed you if you listened to me and hung up the phone. Um, I, I came back, I came from the future. I did, did a time warp, war, like, obey me. <laughs> they do an obey me. And you would have stabbed me regardless. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you got 
the distinct feeling that he's lying for his Steve. You don't peg him as an honest type, considering that he's probably got a bunch of skeletons in his closet if he's attacking strangers for... <laughs> for, um... For the funsies. What did you want my photo for? Scrapbooking? His face darkens at your retort. How is that any of your business? Oh, and the fact that you just stabbed me? It might be leaving me out to die? Yeah, that is kind of my business. Surely he's joking. You look as t look at his tense expression. Nope, he's 100% serious. But at least he's not cutting you open like a stab of me. Like you can keep him talking. Maybe you can find a way out of this mess. <laughs> he's not very good at stabbing me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could probably go out there and, and attack him, right? A Christmas present for your dear old mom or dad, then. Don't talk to uh, talk about my mother. Oh, does he have mommy issues? No, maybe his daddy issues. Very, yeah, maybe both. <laughs> what about your dad? Can I talk about him? Adam considers you a moment, obviously confused by your... A covered attitude, despite the current situation, but he's curious enough to see where this leads. <laughs> Be like, have you watched any scary movies? Are you, um, are you kinda watched Scream and thought you would, you could do better than Stu and Billy? <laughs> what do you want to know about him? Did he snore, uh, snore like a boar? Did he play catch? with you as a kid does he barbecue and watch football on sundays does he make corny dad jokes what does he do for a living to answer your question in order no no yes no and he's a preacher from my hometown church back in tennessee <clears throat> hey tennessee boy you, you attacked an arizona <laughs> I, I i'm i'm arizona I could, I could eat the heat for breakfast. Ah, a fan of big guy in the sky. Eh? I guess you went to church and a lot as a kid. I don't concern you a moment. Oh, so that's your angle. I'm sorry. You gasp as he nails dig into your ruined shoulder. Tears pick at the corner of your eyes, trying to spill over. And you have a bite at your lip to keep in, them in place. I wouldn't be going to the church angle. I would be going on the fact that he might have watched way too much horror movies. No way. Uh, no way will you let this man get the selfish, selfish, satisfaction of seeing you cry. You want to keep me talking until you can think of a, a, a escape plan? Is that it? Oh, my escape plan would have been already grab the, the knife and and oh, I'm going nifty on you. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, but that won't happen. We're alone. I'm armed with a knife. This hi highway is almost always deserted. Hey, me. I have guns. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Uncle wouldn't mind if there was a, uh, there was a few bullets missing. <laughs> Very few cars drive along this highway. And only reason people tend to travel here is for nefarious means or out of sheer desperation. But it's almost always the later. <clears throat> uh, you never go to Arizona and I have a gun. I wouldn't know. I scooped out this place ahead of time. What happens if I carried a gun? For me, I'd probably carry one of the guns with me. Just in case. He gives you a sad, a sad a grin. But you know what? Why not? I'll play the game, this game for a little long, a while longer. It could be fun after all, giving you a small shiver of hope that wouldn't, that someone might pass by and rescue you from your fate. <laughs> Speaking of fate, let's talk about something related to that. Uh, how about gun? Don't bring the knife to the gunfight. Destiny itself. Don't worry. I promise 
the, all the s- circles come back to my father. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with FD on him. His name is Adam. Let's see. He pauses for a moment to gather his thoughts before he begins talking again. My dad. You know, it's funny. Despite being a religious and believing in the power of free will, my father also thinks that destiny plays a big role in everyday lives. How about karma? He always says that while some things are in our control, other things are milestones. Made by God to teach us private life, oh, pivotal life lessons planned for the uh, far in advance. A test of sorts, you could say. He digs his nails deeper into your wounds and you bite your lip. So hard it bleeds. Tell me something. Do you believe in destiny? I believe in Digimon. <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. Mom always said honesty was the best policy, no matter the no matter the circumstance. Why I can't pronounce words I actually know? Mom always said honesty was the best policy, no matter the circumstance. Sure, it might get you killed here, but you're probably already planning on doing that anyway. No. You admit through crunched teeth. Especially when people like you exist. What sick, mystical bullcrap sends someone, me, someone like you to as a test. He stresses down at you for a moment, distracting you with his eyes. You feel like those dead frogs that they use in biology class to teach teenagers how bodies work and function. With your limbs all spread out and pinned to your sides, rip from your organ, uh, right for organs and harvesting. You wait for him to slice you open in response to giving the wrong answer. But you survive he doesn't, it's a surprise he doesn't. Funny, I thought you'd try to lie and please me. Typical, typically when I ask someone a question after they find out that their life's on the line, they try to fit their answers to the one they think I'll like. I have refined honesty as best will be one of the most honorable traits <clears throat> a person can have. In fact, I prefer your honesty, even if our views differ. Do you believe in destiny? Why does that not surprise So you believe in destiny? Why does that not surprise me? Oh, I don't. I'm just curious to see your answer. <clears throat> I wanted to n- get to know me. You want you wanted to get to know me after all, even if it was just to buy some time. I figured I'll assist. I'll extend that same courtesy. He, I normally don't let my guard down and talk about my father like this. Aren't you happy? This shows how special you are to me. Well, n- narcissistic much? <clears throat> Oh, I bet you say that to all your victims. His eyes narrow at your sarcasm, but you continue on because you don't, can't stop yourself. You truly, I, I truly am the luckiest person alive. I don't deserve you or your kindness. You really aren't like other serial killers. I. <laughs> he climbed his, uh, he climbed his knife and buries it deep into your shoulder. It effectively cut you off. It was super effective. When he withdraws the blade, he examines the flesh blood of calling the knife and frowns. I praise your honesty to a stint, but you fare better if you keep your mouth shut. Make me. A childish retort in the grand scheme of things, but you can be damned if you gain the last word in edgewise. You watch as he angles the blade, lifting it high ahead, uh, overhead before bring it down towards your sh- scrotum with the most cold, uh, with the most cold blooded expression. You have to think quickly and throw him off y- his guard to assure your survival. <clears throat> um, what do I do? Let's kiss him. You start, you grit your teeth, 
through the pain. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let's get some. You quit your teeth through the pain. But the first thing that comes to mind, before you, you can react, you grab him by the scruff of his shirt and pull him down. Caught off balance, he drips his knife and braces his hands on the ground, unable to avoid your lame mouth. His dark eyes go comically wide as your lips touch. He goes still for a total of two seconds, which doesn't give you enough time to grab his knife and aim for the jaguar. You expected him to shove you away, to scuff into his mouth, clean <coughs> of you, to drive his knife down in disgust. What you did expect for him is for him to return your kiss with desperate urgency. He's a man who has sought Phil from murder, but when the looks of it hasn't experienced much, if any, infancy interaction, you found an undeniable weakness. He still distracted his eyelids, flushed a flutter shut, and appear unabashed. <coughs> Bash pleasure that you take an opportunity to use the other hand to search for his knife. Your hands wipe around dirt and rocks and asphalt until you hand manage to land on the hilt of the blade. You make sure to have a firm grasp and you launch a knife deep into his side. He cries out, rolling off your body, clearly not understanding what ha just happened, free of his weight. You take the golden opportunity to sprint towards your car. He calls out after you, but you don't look back. Hoping into the driver's side, you rev your engine and floor it, pressing pedal to the metal. You see him limping after you in the rear mirror and watching as he grows smaller, uh, grows smaller before disappearing completely. Adrenaline pumps through your veins, heart struggling against your ribcage. For hours on the drive back to your town, <clears throat> you check your rear via mirror to make sure he somehow managed to, if he somehow managed to teleport into your back seat, and afraid, uh, afraid that he would finish your op. It's not Ghostface. I'm okay now. You say when you see your heart, uh, hometown on the horizon, I'm okay. Him. Elsewhere, 9.30 p.m. Adam reached the return to his, uh, managed to return to his hotel room without much trouble after calling in a few favors. He's lucky he didn't hit anything vital. Just a flesh wound that he managed to stitch together himself. The action of pushing a needle through skin like a second nature thanks to practicing on previous victims. He lies back in his, on the king sized mattress, spent from walking under the crisp sun and laying the hurt to boot, and gain hurt to boot. The sheets feel cool and coldly ticklish beneath him. Everything feels ticklish since that kiss from hours earlier, like his nerves ending on our endings are standing on end, hypersensitive to everything he touches. He absent-mindedly strokes his own bottom lip. He can still taste you, the shape of your body pressed against his, and the, uh, the way you moved under him ingrained in his memory, a permanent stamp on, uh, stamp on his subconscious. His conscious. He wants, you to, wants to see you again. To touch you. To kiss you. To claim you. To mark you. Unwarranted, unwarranted images of you evade his mind. Graphic descriptions of your body intertwined, fooling his lust and causing him his hand to dip down in spots. He slowly unbends his jeans, unable to take much of this. He <laughs> needed to get you out of the system when a woman's face flashes behind his eyelids. She stares at Item in disappointment. Eyes cussing down her cheeks and over her cuts and scars. She shakes her head. Just like him, she mouths.
Adam Glass and rips his hand away, tears picking it at the corners of his eyes in frustration. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. His face flashed behind his eyelids, the sun laying your flame like an angel to sing from the heavens. Stop it. You pull him down again and kiss him. Enough. He chokes out a sob and curls into the failed position, wish he could bleed you out of his pores and untain himself, but you left your mark. He wants to get rid of this, this fever, this disease burning within him. He needs to find the source and destroy it. Adam clams himself down by taking a deep breath and laying a plan formally in his mind. As long as he finished uh, focus on the future task at hand, he can handle this odd feeling overwhelming him and clamoring on what needs doing. When he opens eyes, the shrine with a determined light, and he promises himself he'll find you again. Okay, so that'll be chapter one. So we're gonna save. Probably gonna save. Uh, save right now and then end it here for today if you like my content subscribe I do help out and comment below and I'll see you guys next time